Hello, and welcome to IDS's exciting new show, Between Two Random Plants. I'm Tom Maher. I am the director of IDS, and the guest today is Susan Brooks, who works with us as a public defender administrator. So welcome, Susan. How do you like our set? Uh, yeah, thanks for having me on, but I thought there were going to be ferns. Yeah, it turns out ferns are copyrighted, and you could be sued. Plus, this, I'm paying for these, and this is all I could afford is some fake plants. All right. Well, it's, it's, it's nice. They're very nice. Good. Well, today I would like to talk about one of the most important and topics I have and my favorite topic, and that's me. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I'm leaving IDS in about six weeks at the end of February. How do you feel about that? Well, um, I mean, I'm sad, especially because you're leaving me with a lot of work on this uniform appointment plan project. Well, that sounds exciting, like a chance for professional development. So let's talk a little bit about the uniform appointment plan. Yeah. Now, when I was a kid, I went to a private school, and we had to wear uniforms. Are the lawyers going to have to wear uniforms? Uh, no, uniforms, no uniforms are necessary. Um, that refers to the qualification standards being uniform in, in the plans across the state. Uh, Back in a, a few years ago, the Chief Justice Martin's North Carolina Commission on the Administration of Law and Justice recommended that IDS develop uniform qualification standards for the list. And the General Assembly thought that was a good idea, so they enacted legislation mandating that we do that. The first thing we did was we did a survey of attorneys about what was important and what was necessary for the qualifications for each case type. And we, we wanted their ideas, too, about the appointment process. And so we got 300 responses, which was really great. And then we took those responses and we gave them to a group of experts, including private assigned counsel, a public defender, our statewide defenders, and others. And we discussed the recommendations and we developed criteria. The IDS Commission approved the plan and we posted it on July 1st, 2019 on our website. So you're saying our current plan doesn't work very well. So why do we need a new plan? Well, you may not be aware of this, a little history for you, but a lot of jurisdictions are operating under old state bar plans. The state bar used to be in charge of having the model plan that jurisdictions would, would base theirs on, and they're from the 80s. Um, you may not even be able to find a copy of your plan. We have all of them at IDS in a couple of notebooks, but they're on brittle paper. You can't even copy them anymore. Um, so one of the problems with those plans, despite in, in addition to their being so old, is that they don't even include all the lists that are now needed, like for parent representation and juvenile delinquency, and they have processes that don't apply anymore, like judges appointing in capital cases. So we created a model plan in 2007 to try to cover some of that, and some jurisdictions have adopted some form of that, but probably most are just operating under kind of an understood way that the lists are supposed to be administered and that not really having any real qualification standards for the lists. Okay, well, first of all, I want to point out that for some of us, the 80s were some of the best times we ever had, okay? I can't disagree with you there. Okay, now, can we just ignore this if we don't like it? Well, you can, but I'll explain that in a second. I do want to stress that we want to ensure quality representation by experienced and trained lawyers. And we're not just going to throw you out there and say, if you're not trained, you're not experienced, you can't do it. We want to work with you to help you get training and experience if you need it. You can just ignore it, actually. However, if you do, this plan is going to be your plan as of January 2nd, 2021, and you'll have to operate under that. You can beat the rush now and adopt it as it's written before then, so you can get it off your plate, or you can request modifications before then. And if you miss the deadline, we'll let you ask for modifications after that to make it meet your, your needs. We have a link to a verification and modification request form on our website. And you'll need the bar president to certify that you're adopting it as it is. But if you want modifications, other people who are interested in the indigent appointment plan can request it with the bar president's input. What do people out there actually doing the work need to know about this plan that IDS has come up with? Good question, Tom. I think you thought of that ahead of time. Um, there are some administrative aspects uh, to the plan and how the indigent appointment committees operate. And let me just say, we depend on having active indigent appointment committees to administer the list and, to, and for running the process for getting people on and off the list. We appreciate the work they do, and we need lawyers out there to make sure that their defense systems are strong. So there's some stuff in there about being added to and removed from the list and the kind of notice you get if you're being denied. There are general requirements to be on the list. For every list, we'll have uh, certain things you have to do. Uh, from the model plan, we changed the coverage of some of the lists. For example, we used to have special proceedings kind of be a catch-all, 
but we've separated those out so they're not lumped together anymore and people can specialize in the kind of cases they want to take. Our qualifications uh, have changed for a lot of the lists. We have an orientation material packet that's posted on our website and we want, it to, we want you to review it but we also want it to be useful to you as you handle these cases and so you'll know where different resources are and we'll update it as it's needed and we welcome any ideas from you all about what might need to be added. Um, we have some court observation requirements for some of the lists. All of the lists have some CLE requirements and we know that CLEs can be hard to get to so we'll work with you on that. Uh, we also are requiring for some less experienced attorneys to enter into mentorship programs or second chair programs if they haven't tried a lot of cases. And again, we'll work with you on trying to have systems in place for those kinds of programs um, and we have resources for that. The most important thing for you to know is if you're already on a list, you don't need to reapply. We've what they most sexistly call grandfathered in people into the list and so you don't have to do any more applying, but if you want to remain on the list, you may have to meet some ongoing requirements. We've also created, a, or are working on creating a public defense portal, and that's going to be a way of streamlining communication to groups of attorneys handling certain case types. And it also will have an application, the model application for applying to the list, and if, if the indigent appointment committees will accept that application, that's an easy way of filling it out. There'll be a, a way of tracking CLE, for your ongoing requirements and for the local committees if they want to look at that. And that will also let us know if you're having trouble finding training in any particular area so that we can try to put something together. Okay, now we have two chairs here, so you're kind of my second chair, but I'm not paying you anything. IDS is pretty notorious for not paying people. Are the second chairs going to be doing this for free? No. Uh, we have set out a policy that judges can pay second chairs to do this work. Uh, and we hope that that will encourage people to get that experience that way. Okay, then. Well, what else do we need to know? I will say a lot of what we've talked about, they already know from what we've said. Uh, if you're in a public defender district, though, it's going to be a little bit different for you because the public defender version of the plan is going to be a little bit, it's similar but different because the public defenders administer the lists and they run the committees. Um, the contract districts, if you have an IDS contract, are going to be a little different, too, because we're not going to update the qualifications for the contracts now while they're still going. When they're up for renewal, we'll, we'll change the qualification standards for those. But the uniform plan will apply to any overflow lists that you may have uh, or any lists that aren't covered by contracts in those districts. The most important thing to know is we don't expect you to do all this on your own. We're here to help. Uh, we offer resources to help attorneys represent their clients, including consultations with our Forensic Resource Council and our immigration experts. Uh, we have statewide offices that cover appellate, capital, juvenile delinquency, parent representation, civil commitments, and special proceedings, and they are always willing when attorneys reach out to answer their questions. We have training that we offer through the School of Government that's really great, uh, and we encourage people to come to that. We have a manual series uh, covering all the case types that are on the list, and we have brief and motion banks and other resource materials posted on our website. Well. The truth is, this is the only episode of this show, and very few people are going to watch it a second time. So where can they get information if they don't want to have to go through this show again? Really? Only really? one time? Yeah, you're the only guest. All right. Well, they can go to our website. Oh, there it is, www.ncids.org, or you can contact me, and my information is up there on the screen. And we invite you to, in, to invite us to bar meetings, to... Uh, coffee clatches to meetings of the criminal defense bar anywhere where more than one attorney is gathered and is interested in hearing about this I'm willing to go out and talk to you so just let us know well thank you so much for being on the show and as a reward you can choose one of these plants I think I'll leave them here okay thank you so much for all the work you do for the public defense thanks mm -hmm.